So they don't know what's going on on my phone. So my phone is about to die. I'm like, ah, let me let it die. My homie sees it. He's like, yo, what's going on? He's trying to go in his mentions and click on the story. But I think I clicked on it first before my phone died. Clicked on it. And then AKA was playing my song in the web. Say, yo, 25K, wow. my boy, you're going crazy. DJ Smooth Live presents... Hello everybody, welcome to Big Homie Smooth Out here in Johannesburg in South Africa. I'm quite excited once again, you guys do know. Once you see this studio right here, you do know that I'm dealing with creatives. I'm dealing with people who can create something out of nothing. I'm dealing with people that can come up with words and make them rhyme on beats and come up with a flow that's just gonna either inspire you, excite you, or even make you wanna dance. He's a Sony sign musician, he's an international musician, and he's just came into the game a few years ago. A lot of people would know him from that banging single, the Pele Machiavelli. He's been making a whole lot of other music as well, and he's growing in the industry. And as I'm speaking to him now, he's telling me, yo, because I'm going into studio even tonight, like we're recording, we're making some music. What's up, Pitor? I'm always excited when I get to interact with people from Kopitor. So, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to bring you guys the Peli Makaveli, aka, um, to, do they call you 25k? 25,000 kilo, 25k kilograms, yo. No, I'm very happy to meet you. Yo, man. very happy to meet you. Very happy to meet you for real, for real. Like one of the people that inspired me, like on a whole different scale, like on that township influence in terms of like, yo, you one of my brother's favorite like DJs out the country. That's that's crazy for me to be here. Like I know on his behalf as well. When he watches this, he's gonna be like, yo. Ah, that's so dope, man. And and you know what's beautiful, um, Mr. 25K, is that in a few years' time, it'll be the same thing. You'll be sitting with, with young cats who are saying, yo, I watched you coming up and, and this and that. And, and I always say, um, every generation has to be better than the generation before. Yeah. Things have sure. to be easier for you guys. Yeah, uh, you know, as opposed to us, as for instance, when you're talking about music, yeah. us we had to go and market the music at and Lego because it's the whole country. At least yeah. you guys now have got social media, digital, you know what I mean? Yeah, so otherwise, give me 25k. Where are you from? I'm putting this down, my brother. 25,000, give me fun of my sample, water, paley, um, source veil, at Richville, yeah, source veil, um. We call it Pele in a nutshell, Mara. There's one street that really separates Etridgeville from Sauceville, which is Seco Street. So Sauceville is more closer to like Brazzaville, Jeffsville, Mashongo, Kanasites, which is where I'm from. Uh, the home of the late DJ Spogo. Yeah, that's that's really me. Like I'm a I'm a artist slash producer slash future hip-hop mogul i like that yeah i don't know you produce as well yeah i actually do like that's how i actually got into me rapping on these songs which is okay. crazy and how did it all start um it really started in primary school like when i was young i used to listen to a lot of like dr dre snoop dogg eminem like at that time i was just listening to like the songs so i'd write them down and like a jotter, the lyrics, and then rap along to the songs, and then Kim Presawa for it too. So they were like, hey, so you can actually spit Eminem's verse word for word. And then one time, this other friend of mine called Klaus, um, he's like one of my day ones. He actually introduced me to like a friend of his, oh, Natana Lena Skelago for Tregerta. He had uh, FL Studio. So he pulled up Fruity to. Loops. Yeah, he stays in West Park. So he pulled up Dasogo Pele with his PC. And then we used the headphone microphone. You lie. For real. <laughs> we were in the shack in Romano Street, my, my other homie spot called Majosi. So he set up a session there. I recorded this other song. So my friend actually saw this from like a young age when we were growing up that, yo, maybe like. This guy could be like the next big thing. So he kept telling me even at a at a young age, I was just doing it out of passion. So 
from me recording that song, that was one of the songs we recorded it in 2008, I think. So I think DJs, was... DJs can relate. Guys, you know how it is when you are using <laughs> headphones as a mic. Yeah. You put it on the, on, the, on the mic console there, then you speak to the crowd because there's no mic, but you're using headphones. Yeah. Now imagine having to rap an entire song rapping on the headphone. That was <laughs> yeah. improvising so on the highest was, level. That was the, the, the actual first song that I recorded. And then guys, Sandela Manora was Gela via Bluetooth. And then people were actually impressed. Or, Yo, you can actually make your own song. So my homie had that like A&R kind of mindset. He hit up uh, T-Bag who was doing the show. Elayama Shahidi with somebody and them. Yeah. He was like, Yo, my homie is really like killing out here. Like you need to put him on to that Mashaidi time slot for a young interview. So the homie was like, Okay, pull up. And then when we pulled up out there, like I was heavily influenced by Lil Wayne at the time. So yeah. my raps really sounded like Lil Wayne. So the homie actually gave us like uh, a platform. So there we had an interview, but the, the gems of that interview actually came off air, like after the interview. So the homie was pulled up uh, over by the the OG that we pulled up there for uh, yep. T-Bag. Uh, I still remember this conversation till this day. So he was like, yo, I feel you, it's dope. And I like the fact that you're putting your homies on, you got them to be out here, people heard you, people were already calling in to show you that at least you guys are heading somewhere. But like, I feel like you guys are influenced by like Lil Wayne, New Age, these kind of New Age rappers that we have right now, if I'm not mistaken, and he was correct. So he was like, yo, I can hear it in the music. I just feel like, we come from the same street. Like, just talk about the stuff that you see, and stuff like that. At the time, I was really like a backpack rapper, La Maniora. State Theater, 012, freestyling, that's all. So I was listening to a lot of Papoose, Chino XL, Immortal Technique. Oh, you were listening to real rappers. Yeah. yeah. So I was really backpack rapping. So at the time, like, one time I was in class and we used to write raps in our books. Like, the teacher would be like, yo, like, take out your notebooks and then write notes and stuff like that. We, like... I used to write fast, so every time maybe we had notes to take off the board, write fast, and then after that, you think we write in notes, but we write in rap. So I actually wrote my first rap um, song in Vanek at that time. So when I spelled it for my home, he was like, "Ma, dog, you can't be sounding like that. You sure that's you? I was like, yo, bro, trust me, I'm finna. So recorded the song played it for him and then that was actually the start of like 25k so like me being a producer started off from the computer i was using at home i used to record myself on mixcraft and nero at the time um from there i started now just recording every time i'd hear maybe a low wayne beat I'd go to hip instrumentals, download the beat, and do a remix of the same song. So I kept dropping, dropping. And then in 2010, I think that's where I kind of saw that, yo, I actually might be going somewhere with this. Me and my homie, Killer X, he's on my debut album, Peli Makave. When we were in high school, we dropped um, a mixtape called No Loli Ki, because my real name is Leto Nolo. And his name is Cabello. He called himself Ki at the time. We called it Ritla Graduate Dama. So we were wearing the school uniform from Lodium Secondary School on the cover. And then in the in the tape, we were talking about stuff that was happening in the hood. Like me being from Pele. He was from Sosha. He was talking about stuff that he'd see in Sosha. And then we talk about people we'd see in school. So that created like a market for us at school. People started demanding like for us to like, to buy the music actually. They'd be like, yo, if you send me the mixtape, how much can I compensate you with? So I had the vision because I had a PC at home. I bought like 
a hundred print calls. <laughs> yeah. And then I burned all of them with the mixtape and then we dropped the mixtape. We were selling it in school. It sold out in less than a month. And then wow. same year, I failed that year. That's what's crazy. <laughs> 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 hey, Mama Zala. Okay, music. Yeah. music or pass. <laughs> yeah, Mama Zala was actually mad at me because that same year was when I was recording the mixtape. My homie lost the other one from... The one who used to go to school, go for a trigger. Yeah. We'd catch um, a bus at the same bus stop. So he lives up the street from me, He'd come down, knock on my door. Yo, let's go. So every time he'd knock, when it was like August, September, when we were writing like our, our pre-finals, yo, I was recording. He was like, yo, you're going to get late for the bus, you're recording song. So he'd even tell the friends at his school, like, hey, Joe, that man is going crazy. He's recording songs before we climb the bus. And then the talent, the talent show at school that year, I was, me and my friend were the closing performance, yo. That stuff kind of blew up in school. So it started making rounds in schools in Pretoria, like Sosha, Peli, Mums. So... But now, at that time, people didn't really know the face to the music because we were sending, like, the stuff in Bluetooth. We'd be chilling with the boys, and then someone maybe is chilling right there. He's playing the song, but he doesn't know it's me. It's so you, my homies yeah. would be like, yo, this is the dude. They'd be like, nah, you can't So from that, yo, I failed that year, and then I had to take, a, like, a break from music. So from Nagatia Dai Breaky, I started focusing more on, like, my academics, because I was doing a math and science in school, which was pretty tough for the stuff that I was trying to do. So I actually managed to like do the music stuff when schools was closed and then focus on academics. And then I passed grade um, 11. I failed, I failed grade 11 in 2011. And then the next year, I passed grade 11, went to matric. So in matric, me and the homie actually took a break from music. So it was like, yo, do you think, I remember me and him having a conversation. He was like, hey, Joe Levelity, like, do you think our music could take off like Bo Elias and AKA and Casper? I was like, my dog, me for sure. I really feel like after school, I'm going to be a musician. He was like, nah, you lying, dog. And SA, I was like, for real, my dog. He was like, nah. So after school, me and him, I, I started making beats in grade 12. I was making beats. So I was sending him the beats saying, yo, just rap on my stuff. And he was like, ah, cho. ah I tried rapping on it, but it's not that far. Yeah. So after my trick, I took like a gap year and I didn't really know if I was gonna further my studies or I was gonna do the music stuff so I started making beats making beats and then that's when I started calling myself um, 25k because I was like yo if I make a beat and I send it to one of these guys like Cass aka I'm gonna charge them 25k <laughs> for a beat <laughs> yeah crazy you story the price yeah <laughs> so I was like I know that's crazy, but that's what I'm going to charge them. So I didn't actually have like a placement for my beat. So I started now, as I was making the beat, I started going back to the writing process. So now it ended up... Be before we continue with the writing process, yeah. who taught you to make beats? Uh, yo, the internet. Oh, so you taught yourself? Yeah, FL Studio. Crazy yeah. enough, I'd see kids like... Uh, there was this kid, Louis V, Cardiac... Metro Booming, Lex Luger, Southside and TM88, Sunny Digital. When they were making beats, I'd watch the tutorials. Mm. So I'd also download the tutorial from FL so I could make a beat. I could make a beat without playing the MIDI keyboard. Mm. So I'd make a digital beat, but it sound it sounded melodic at the time and then over time off of like I made a mixtape and around the same time I made a mixtape, um my mom was like, yo, are you going to get a job or are you like, what are you trying to do with your life? And yeah. at the time, I really wanted to get a job because like I felt what my mom was saying because she worked hard for me to be like, because Lodium is like a, 
an Indian English, community. Yeah, right? so it's like an English medium speaking school. And so what is it, Lodium High? Lodium Secondary School. Oh, look, Lodium Secondary. Okay. Yeah, I actually went to the same school as Lamise. She was like... Oh, Lamise all with you. Yeah, she was head girl when I was in grade 10. And she was in the trip, like, grade... I think I was in grade nine, yeah. Grade nine, she was in Madrid. So, at that time, I really had to, like, have a wake-up call in terms of, like, if I'm really trying to do the music. Because I'd bump into people, Baba Tlang, Skelalena, they'd be like, Eh, Joe Santana, we do music. I'd be like, Eh, Joe, get a piece, I'll be like, no, we do the beat. They'd be like, ah. Sometimes you'd worry a little bit, yeah. Yeah, so that's that's where the the, the wake up call. So, the homie that I was close with, um, the one from Sosha, yeah, now he had a job at the time. So, my other friend actually tried um, hooking us up with a job. His mom worked at the Department of Education, and then we got a temporary job. And then we worked there, and as we were working there, like, I think it was a four-week, four yeah, I think it was a four-week uh, temporary job. So when we got paid, I was like, <laughs> damn. Like, the amount that I got paid, nah, like, yeah. no cap. My homies were like, hey, so off of hustling, I think we could have made more because we had to sometimes catch a train to get that. So I respond, I go, hey, you see? Uh, yeah, so hey, from that I was like, hey Joe, hey, me, with half of like what I'm getting paid, we were supposed to go to homecoming. Like, I tried applying for homecoming artist on the rise, but I didn't get selected. So I was like, yo, since we're going to homecoming festival experience, me, I'm gonna take half of my pay. Obviously take it home and be like, yo, mom, this is what I actually made. And then the other half of it was like for homecoming. And then what was left off of it, I bought equipment. Like um, when I bought the equipment, I told my mom, like, yo, she was actually proud of me waking up every day, going to like work it's and funny, stuff like yeah. that. But that's the only job I ever had. So from me buying the equipment at the time, like I was hustling me and Klaus, like the homie, like he also took a gap year with, with me. So at the time when, yo, when was this? I think 2014, yeah, 2014. So at that time, me and him, we started doing a young hustling on the side there because my uncle was like a hustler. So he put me onto a lot of stuff in terms of like, yo, got to take care of the fam, don't get caught up in the streets, like, you got to have it in the back of your mind all the time, don't get tricked out your spot and stuff like that, so, me and the homies started selling, like, a little weed here and there, just off of, like, to survive, yeah, the small money we were making, like, if, if we cup maybe a bag for, like, a hundred, we'd maybe make another hundred on top of it, like, off of just hustling, and then the weed started transitioning into like the hardcore stuff. And then at that time I was too deep, like caught up in the streets because I looked up to my uncle because my father passed in 2007. When I was in grade seven. So my uncle was a person that I looked up to as like a father figure. Yeah. So I cool. saw the hustle from him, like every time we, like, there was once a, a time when my mom got sick, like, for like a year straight, she even lost the job. So my uncle was really like putting in overtime, make sure there's food at the crib and stuff like that. So off of the, the stuff I was soaking up from him, like, I knew like me doing a little hustling in the streets, I was doing like bad stuff and my mom wasn't really impressed off of that. So I tried to keep it in the street and not let like people come to the yard and be like yo i'm looking for dude i'm trying to cop because my uncle already had like uh a weed business going on before he passed he was a snake man yeah he was a snake man so when he passed and i started doing some like that like my mom started catching up and be like yo you're not your uncle like 
But did you make the mistakes of getting high on your own supply or you just only no, sell it? No, 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 no. Well trust done. me, trust me. Even like me and, and my friends. conscious about it. Right? Yeah, because like most of the people that we grew up with either ended up in jail, on drugs, or some of them rest in peace, like they passed away. So from a young age, we were like, those kids that were like different from the other kids because like when I was still in school doing the mixtapes and all, he'd bring me books on music and be like, hey, Joe, I borrowed this from like music class. Read me, Anna. He saw, tell me what you pick up from that. So we'll see what we can do. So off of the weed, I started getting into like the hardcore stuff. That's where my mom was like, yo, you need to like decide what you're doing with your life because like, I had like two near-death experiences when I was caught up in that life, like the other incident, my homie almost got shot at, um, I got into a car accident, and it was just like a whole lot of hood, I don't know how to put it. Yeah, like, it, it happens when you're going through a wrong path, those things yeah, are happen. like the, and then and, and, and if you are lucky enough. It's when you have an epiphany before it gets yeah. worse. Yeah. So but unfortunately, other people, you know, they don't. Yeah. Get they don't. Enough. Yeah. They end up so in jail or losing their Yeah. Lives. So my wake up was like at the same time when I was still hustling in the streets. Um, one friend of mine, his name is Carabo. He's my DJ, like till this day. So he's close with Vatots, so our Galaxy boy. Yeah. So Vatots was doing. Um, Shout out to the Tots. Yo, shout out to <laughs> him, like I Galaxy Boy. When I started Mofi, they were also around yeah. starting Galaxy Boy. My, my foundation, Galaxy Big up, Boy. Guys, sure. Big up, So they were doing freestyle Fridays, trying to bring the uh, back in the day, kept CD cipher culture back in the CD. So he store in Hatfield, they were doing the freestyles there. So my homie used to go to like... Um, homecoming events, like FVIP for Galaxy Boy as well. So he kind of saw a space for me when I was still in the hood trying to figure out what I'm doing, hustling, being in the streets, at the same time making these songs. So he was like, yo, there's actually a platform the homies put out. They saying you drop a freestyle, one freestyle, 30 seconds. That's all it takes for you to at the Galaxy Boy store, it was like, yo, if you really say you hot, then you need to be there at the store freestyle. Like, I was like, yo, trust me, I got it. I remember I was with this other homie of mine, his name is Pascal. Um, he was like, yo, so what you finna do? Are we freestyling this thing, shooting it, uploading it to Facebook to let them know that, yo, we coming with that Paley, Rap, Vanek, wave or what so i was like ish my dog let me actually i took my phone i was like yo let me actually try recording something and then i'm gonna show it to you so got in the crib it was a song he hadn't actually heard before so put my phone there played the song with my speakers and then i was rapping to the song and then i took that clip i showed it to him i'm like yo listen to this he was like yo this is fire when is this dropping? I was like, yo, that's my homie song. I'm finna drop it by this verse. I want to post it there on Facebook. And I think this is the one. He was like, yo, let's upload it now. Went to the... That was when 20 was coming up with 20 Wi-Fi at the time. Yeah, I yeah. remember. Yeah. Went to the closest Wi-Fi spot, uploaded the video, chilled. Yo, my notification started blowing up off of that. Because I was already putting songs on Audio Mac, SoundCloud, and Data File Host at the time. I was getting about 100 downloads, which grew to like 500, 1,000. So from that, homie hits me up. It's like, yo, uh, other homie called Kaz, uh, taught his home. He was like, yo, I'm from Galaxy Boy. Yo, you really put out that. Then I'm going to send you beats. And if you can rap to these, I want you to pull up at the store. It would be an honor to have you. So when I pulled up out there, my homie Carabo has a brand called Blaro, which is like a, an abbreviation of where we come from, Black Rock in Soulsville. So he calls it Blaro. So I had a shirt put on that said, Free Mashavane Blaro. So I went there with a red cap because I love red. It's like my favorite color. I was wearing a red cap, black tee, black diesel jeans, and um, 
what kicks was I wearing? Because I remember, because it, it became iconic. I was wearing my... Fresh. Yeah, I was wearing my Jordan 6s, the infrared ones. Yeah. So I was there rapping, like other dudes were rapping in English. I was there rapping in Vanek. So every time I was rapping, people went crazy and thought was like, oh, who's this dude? Yeah. So when he saw the name Brent Blaro, he remembered my homie that, yo. So he took a picture of the t-shirt I was wearing and then he, he co-signed it and added my homie there to say, yo, I think this bro is the truth. So from there, he kind of gave me like a platform to be like, yo, if you ever dropping anything, bro, just give me a shout. I'm gonna put you on. Just make sure your cover arts are like cool and stuff like that. If you need a cover art from me, I'm gonna handle you something. So got drop at that. So so from that, I was one leg trying to make it into the industry. One leg still caught up in the streets. Like certain times I'd be freestyling day, like my phone ringing, give it to my homie. He's picking up. There's someone in the hood waiting on us. <laughs> yeah, it was that crazy. So from that, like, I I started dropping like every Friday. So every Friday I drop a single, drop a single, drop a single, drop a single, and I ended up dropping a song called No Sleep, which got like positive reviews. And that same year, when I sent those songs that I dropped for Artists on the Rise at Homecoming, they actually picked me there. So I kept dropping songs on the streets. So Homecoming was also doing like the, the workshop. Like JR was there, I remember Slick, um, Thule from Lock Entertainment. Um, Reese was there as well. That's where I met Reese um, the first time he was with yeah, I think with Flame, um, Foka was also there because he also came up under like Homecoming Artist on the Rise. The previous year, he was the winner. So in 2016, I was a contestant there. So I also pulled up there, same swag, like T, red cap on, shades, the Jordans as always. Came there, first day, we were rapping our asses off and then I got drafted into like the final 50. So there, I think that's where I actually, cause I was still in the streets at that time, but like that opportunity kind of made me reflect. Like I started like distancing myself a bit from the streets and I told my homies like, yo, it's all love. I, I just feel like, yo, I need to put more energy into so I started locking myself in, making more beats, making sure that if I have like 10 songs, I need to playlist them proper, like one after the other, hit up thoughts, yo, I need to cover art, what not, what not. So I actually made it to the top, yo, top 10. Yeah. Yeah, and then they made it interesting. In the top 10, they were like, nah, this thing of y'all playing songs, like, we heard your songs. Like, everybody can make a song. You guys are solid. We taking it back to the rap CD days. Cap CD. Let's go. Everybody spit in a 16. You got Yo. 30 seconds to save your life. Yo. Yo. <laughs> so I'm sitting there. I think um, the first homie that was on and I was supposed to be after. So I'm looking at the homie that I'm going toe-to-toe -to -toe with. I'm like, I'm looking at him like I'm thinking about where I'm coming from. Like I took a risk with my life. I, I was doing bad stuff. My mom also told me like, yo, you see that you're going to end up in jail? Or I'm going to lose you to the streets. So that was like a, a very sentimental what she told me. So right there at that moment, I looked at the dude that I was going to go head to head with. And I just didn't see it in him like. I felt the hunger in me to be like, yo, bro, like, no disrespect, but out here, like, only one of us is going to come out alive, and it has to be me. <laughs> so yeah. when, it was, uh, when it was our turn to jump on, like, Katleo um, Malaji from Homecoming, uh, he's also, like, one of the people that helped me in terms of, like, structuring my career as a business also the brand and also a whole lot of legal stuff so he was the MC at the time he was like yo so who's going first so the dude is like he pauses for a bit so I'm like let me go first yo <laughs> that 16 that I spent it was so cold like 
I could like there's an innovation I could feel the anticipation going up like and then after I spit that 16 it was over for the dude once he held the mic they were like yo my G you held it down but this guy like yo so I was like yo so who's the better contender between the two is it 25 or is it Ish? I forgot the other dude's name no disrespect so the people actually went crazy for me and then I actually got to perform at Homecoming Africa and then when I performed at Africa, that was like the first time I performed at a festival because I used to go to homecoming as, as like, a a, yeah, going there, checking out when end of an era, yeah, homecoming picnic. And then they said homecoming Africa, I was there watching OT Genesis, Whiskey, and Black Coffee. So the next day I was on the same stage. So even for my homies, it was a wake-up call because we had to be on time. We got a call sheet now. Somebody has to be road managing. Somebody has to DJ and stuff like that. So I started having that business mindset of like structuring how I move as a collective. I also like certain times I'd pull up with like really hectic hood dudes and then they'd mess my stuff up with people. So I also had to learn that like, yo, my homie, like, what I'm doing right now, I'm trying to make a change. And, like, if this thing is, is like, making it weird for me and the people that book me, I'm going to have to leave you in the hood and I'm going to go do the show. But don't worry, it's all up, that kind of stuff. I had to really go through those. And and, and we love our friends, guys, and, and to, to all the hustlers out there. There has to be that moment. I always call it... You, 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 there has to be a time in your life where you either promote, demote, or delete, right? There's people that need some promotion. Probably it's even your family that loves you so much, but you never even spend that much time. Just promote them, bring them closer. Yeah. And there's just some people you need to demote, not really get rid of, out of mm -hmm. your life, but sort of put them at arm's length, because maybe yeah. they're too close. Those are the people who are not bringing yeah. any value, but they're just takers. But maybe you love them so much that maybe there's something that you're getting from them, you don't want to entirely get rid of them out of your circle. You put them at arm's length, that is demoting. But then we all know there's some people that need deleting. Yeah. You know, because they're just here, they're just a number. Because I give them so many, so many chances to say there's something we can do together. Yeah. But then maybe this person becomes a liability. Yeah, no disrespect. You, back, well, like, I'm, you know what I mean? I'm huge on giving back and before to like empowering the homies as well. I'm huge on that. Like most of my team is people that have been with me, like from the jump so that year 2019 um so i won artist on the rise in 2016 right so after getting on that stage it kind of gave me leverage to get bookings and pta and then 2017 2016 2017 2018 i was doing shows maybe got imams aman skral so Shachi Sanyama, Peli, Hikula Boxing Day, being the opening act there, like earning my way up in the game. And then in 2019, I think, not I think, like that's when I actually got to make my first break, um, Culture Voucher. So that song, I had the melody stuck in my head when I heard the beat. And I recorded the melody on my phone. I played the beat for my homie. And then I saw his face change. I was like, yo, you think that's crazy? You need to hear the melody I have for this song. Then he was like, yo, when are you going to record that? I was like, yo, save the session. Left the beat as it was. I was like, next time we pull up here, I'm going to play you the song. Recorded the song, played it for the homie. He was like, yo, this is crazy. You need to drop it now. But I was like, nah, you play Played it for my other homie. He said, it was Thursday. He said, drop the song now. I said, nah, my dog. I think Friday is a good day because I was dropping singles On every Friday. Yeah. yeah. So I hit up thoughts. I'm like, yo, I have this other song. Um, it's called Culture Voucher. And I, I didn't really send him the song. And he was like, let me do you a cover art. Send me the cover art. Now I had the cover art and the song. And I didn't even know how to upload to up, Apple Music and like all these digital platforms. Said SoundCloud, drop the song. Yo, the first show I had after I dropped the song, like people were singing the song word for word. Wow. 
And then people on Twitter were like, yo, who's that dude that they were coding lyrics from my song? Say, yo, who's that dude that performed yesterday at Party on the Plot? We heard the lyrics, five thousand Labrador, what not, what not. I was like, damn. So this song, I really need to. So I started pushing the song. Like every Wednesday, I'd post the song. Like I'd get people showing me love, just snapping, listening to the song. Five thousand Labrador. And then I had, a, I had an idea. My homies with the clothing, like Plaro. So I was like, yo, we need to say merch for this. And I did a Vigil Ablo inspired 5,000 Galavararo t-shirt with inverted commas. And I put the souls veil, what, 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 Plaro, South Africa, Pitori, what, what. And then the tees started selling. The song is taking off. Every show we're doing is going up. Hey, now. I'm telling that homie of mine, like, I'm like, yo, this song, I think it might be the one we might need to, like, invest into this one. Like, I see the other songs, but we might need to invest in this one. Crazy enough, we dropped the song in 2018, in December, right? Mid-2019, um, I opened a uh, F&B check account. Because I found out that you can link PayPal with F and B, yeah. and then you can pay for like TuneCore uploads. Uploaded the song, said Apple Music link. So now I got introduced to that market of of like streaming. So people now started reposting my stuff on Apple, and then it looked cool. So from there, off of the shows I was doing, and off of like the little money I was making off of hustling, um, I saved up like 10k. And then I hit up Snow Deep. Uh, Snow Deep is like one of the pioneers of like broken beat kind of sound and piano. In PTA, he's from Mums. I also did a song with him called Tamati, which is on a broken beat with team percussion around the same time. Hit him up. I'm like, yo, who shoots your videos? Like, I see your videos always looking crazy. Like, yo, there's this dude named Ayanda. He's also from Mums. Hit him up. I hit Ayanda up. Yo, my dog. I'm trying to shoot a video, but yo, my budget is kind of tired because I was I was a hustle at the time. You know? Like, hey, Joe, full of pockets for the jacket. Whatever, Joe. Even if the video looks cheap, I just feel like this song, one was like, Actually, ah, Joe, yeah. we can make it come alive. We can, if I can hire a camera and we shoot for like four hours, maybe, in your hood, we can make it go. But he didn't hear the song. So he's pulling up thinking, Esh, I'm on my job. Better go shoot that video for the man. So he actually hears the song the first time when we shot the first scene, Konasi Kulama Unde, where the. I don't know how to, what, what to call it. You see those signs? Focus. Yeah. Maybe Hotanara so we put it Yeah, I get one inside. Yeah. So there's one that says Atrich V on the other side. Hotanara side is the Lodiam. Yeah. Yeah. So Hotana, come on this straight. Hotlofitla was Siku. The other side, they Elia Super Stadium. Okay, Atrich V on the other side is Salzville. So I was like, yo, I need to put on for Salzville. Let's shoot here. So that was the first scene. So he actually heard the song there. He was like, nah, is this your song? I'm like, yeah, it's like a joke. It's every time people posting this song on like WhatsApp and stuff like that. Can't it's your song, hey, Joe. So as he was shooting the video, he kind of got like into the moment. I started, he started being like passionate about it, saying, yo, hey, Joe, I feel like this song is going to take off. Hey, Joe. And the hood actually came out that day. Like, it came out, yeah? Yeah, like when I went to the old shops, that's what I went to. There was a old... Um, Chesanyama that was operating there, that was managed by DJ, somebody called Bucha Cafe. So we parked a E3325 and a super bike next to it and the hood behind me. And then I did the the thing that Bo Little Baby, Young Thug, Lil Thug and all these new wave rappers were doing in the States for their hoods, like coming from Atlanta, coming from Chicago, coming from California, New York. And then when the video was done, um, I think it kind of took us two, it didn't take us long. He sent me a first draft first and I was like, I might need to change one, two things. But it already looked clean. 
when he sent me the final cut of the video and he asked me when are you dropping it i think he sent it on monday i said yo wednesday i'm going live with the link upload youtube wednesday so now at the time um pori yeah pori is the first person in the industry to actually show love because tuli from log and homecoming she manages pori so she played the song for pori and pori was like what let me play the song again, play the song, snap, and he tagged me in the song. I was like, yo, appreciate it, hot ah, man. Dope. So you got a cosign from my police? First, that before anybody one. else. Ah, that was a good one. Drop the song. Hey, when the song dropped, it was crazy. When the, when the video dropped on Wednesday on YouTube, um, I think I had hit up Pencil. Uh, Pencil from Pencil and Zing Master. So he was like close with like VG at the time. VG was at Channel O at the time. Right? Nah, he was at MTV. Oh, so, sorry, MTV. Yeah. yeah. So, so they were submitting videos this is before that. Before Universal. No? Yeah. So I hit up Pencil and said, "Yo, I got the song that I shot a video for. I'd like to." He was like, "Yo, I'm actually submitting a video. Crazy enough, you hit me up. This was in Jan. I'm gonna scoop you up. You're gonna go to Hyde Park." Go to Hyde Park, give him the USB. Fiji takes the videos, we fill out the forms, we fill out the forms, submit, right? But I'm sure in his mind he thought um, those were like Bacardi, piano kind of music oh, videos. Yeah. And dance. then he played that one, he said, nah. So Garrick called Pentel and he said, yo, who owns the video that? You just submitted with the 25k title, culture vouch, whatnot. Pencil hit me up. He's like, yo, MTV is wilding for that thing. They're saying they're playing it tomorrow on Thursday, but they're going to give you like a spanking new day. They're going to play till Friday to see what the, the, the viewers are saying. And then you're going to get like a standalone um, premiere with the spanking new. So he was kind of proud. At then, because I also look up to like, it's also crazy. I'm also tapped in with like the OGs from my hood, like Bopentele, Mapentani, even on the rap side. Like, I grew up listening to Goma Java, Base Marky also did some stuff, Lebo, Kulichana, Letswaka. So I was listening to those guys, and that's where the inspiration and like my style of rap really comes from. Fast forward when the video actually played Spanking New. Other, other, the other time we were doing a show at 442 and 012, 11 o'clock. We just finished the show. My phone is blowing up, but it's gonna die, right? So I'm yeah. telling the homies, yeah, I need to charge. They're like, oh, what? You let me not charge. <laughs> Because it's one iPhone cable in the car and everybody's trying to charge, right? And you, you have to... Let it yeah. yeah. So they don't know what's going on on my phone. So my phone is about to die. I'm like, ah, let me let it die. My homie sees it. He's like, yo, what's going on? He's trying to go in his mansions and click on the story. But I think I clicked on it first before my phone died. Clicked on it and then... AKA was playing my song in the web, say, yo, 25K, wow. my boy, you're going crazy. Damn, I look at that, my phone dies, right? So I charge my phone because the homie saw that, yo, it's late now, we're on our way to Pele. My phone is charging, Tuli hits me up, it's like, yo, check your Instagram, like, you up now. So I'm, I'm looking at my mentions, they going up, eh, when I get home, my phone... It's, it's still like I think I had like fifteen percent to be precise left. Uncharge my phone. Homies drop me off. I get in the crib, charge the phone, and then I'm like, "Yo, getting ready for bed." I'm like, damn, my phone rings, but I'm like, "What?" I check my phone. It's an unsafe number. I'm like, "Nah," I leave it. But something says, "Yo, just pick up." Who's calling you so late? Like. Maybe the homies are calling you from a different number. Pick up the phone, Keenan's like, yo, my boy, what's up? This is Super Mega. What the? I was like, ah, Damn. that's dope. AK showed you some love. Yeah, he was like, yo, so what you on? Is your number on WhatsApp? I said, yeah. Instead of WhatsApp, FaceTimes me. FaceTime, answer, yo, it's the man himself. Like, yo, that song is going crazy. 
Carrick actually passed me your number like, yo, what are you doing with the song? Because at the time I was already working on other stuff. And it was like, the song, which song? It's like Culture Vulture. It's like, man, the song, I feel like I just shot the video. It's out there right now. It's like, yo, if you really would like me to jump on it, yo, it's a pleasure. This is super mega. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. he's like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send me the beat. I'm going to do a verse for you. I'm thinking like, ah. He won't. Yeah, like but even if it's that, stuff. it's already too much that he's showing love, right? Yeah. I send him the record, I'm chilly. So the homies are like, Ejo, that man is nepile dai then Ejo, din tam bila bila. At the same time, like Ko also showed me love. Um, Kespa also showed love. Like people were starting to to pick up on the sound because it created a whole wave after mm. that. And I feel yeah, like you know the big guys are. Yeah, so I feel like it. that song is actually one of the songs that created the new wave of like hip hop artists in SA because. When I was in high school, after high school, the hip hop that we were listening to in high school, it was Bo Elias, Bo Magzi, Bo Mega, Bo Pro, Pro Vepe, and all that stuff. And then, 2013, 14, Bo MT, Bo Dropa, Bo Bo Risi. So, yeah, those were the cats that we were listening to. So, at that time, when. It took him it took him two days actually. The first day the homies were like, Yo, what's up? You think that money if you send him, he can send you a verse and stuff like that. That same day when I went to the crib, when we split up with the homies, he hit me up. He said, Yo, send me your email. I'm gonna send you the song, right? Send him my email. And um it was when was this? It was on Friday. That's when he said he's gonna send the song, right? No response from him. So I'm like, should I call him? Should I? So I'm like, nah. Saturday, he hits me up. He's like, yo, actually, like, my orchestra, I know you saw that. I'm trying to do the orchestra day at, like, uh, San Arena. So I'd love for you to be a part of it. And I know the lineup is, like, already concluded. But my guy, Tiamo, is gonna hit you up and trust me i want you to be a part of it i want you to rock out for pitori so i'm telling the homies yo we're doing orchestra that was like yo that's crazy so from day on saturday he hits me up at night at around 12 he's like yo i'm about to record the song so i'm like damn he's really doing yeah it. so now i'm playing the song i took down my verses of the song from the project so i'm playing the song Thinking, yo, if he really does the verse, how is it gonna sound? Like, yo, yo. I think I slept. He calls me early in the morning, 5 a.m. I missed the call, right? I yeah. When I call him back, I said FaceTime. When when he answered the call, he's in studio, he plays me the verse. Yo. Yo, yo so yo. when it gets to the hook. He starts it again. He's like, yo, it's too much. I got to play it for you one last time. He plays it again. I'm like, yo, this is crazy. What's Sends going on me. in your mind this time? Like, that was, that was like a very sentimental moment for me because, like, I really look up to, like, because what cares, little mega, it's like you. Like, when I was young in primary school, like, Brown Dash, like, all that stuff, it was it was causing waves like in Pretoria and that was like mostly in Zulu but you can imagine like if it's touching in Pretoria it's definitely touching the whole country so that was a crazy moment for me because I was like I also felt like a lot of rappers are talented in Pele per se also Pretoria I felt like they didn't get to have like a mainstream artist really pull through for them and then it actually becoming a thing. Like what Black Les and what Envale, what P Dotto, they held it down with like the Cap C D records era and stuff like that. So I was like, damn, am I really the face of like what's next coming out of Pretoria? Like after we recent them. So I was like, yo, this is crazy. He sent me the saps to the first same day, right? And then he was like, yo, my boy, 
that verse is my gift to you so whatever you do with it like that's on you i, I don't oh, really man. want none in return if you're trying to shoot a video like i'm all in just let me know hit your guy i'm gonna hit my guys and let them know what's up right pulled up to the orchestra that was crazy like i was in the dressing room that was next door to him pulled up there that's when i met mt they were playing fifa actually got to meet him he was with with the family yeah um cairo was also there elias like it was just good vibes and bo rich mahog and um don design were like yo like mega like really messes with your stuff like for real for real like bro trust me it's not it's not many dudes like you one of one and mega doesn't just yo so when you're getting love from mega you must yeah. know so crazy <laughs> thing i had the verse the homies don't know right yeah. so every time i'm chilling with the homies it's a like it's a huge moment for them to be like, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, hey, Joe, hey, Joe. So they're like, hey, Joe, so I'm like, hey, Joe, I get it, you think, But they don't know it's already Yeah, done. so I'm like, you think if I send it to him, they're like, I'm going to try, 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 at least you're rocking the orchestra, they're going to see it all over, I'm to try. Hey, I have a meeting with Katleo uh, Malachi, because... Homecoming. Yeah, I got a, I got a DM request from... Um, Taviso Kati, who was MD at Universal at the time. Yeah. So it's on my Instagram. It's like Taviso used to be partners with KO. Yeah. What? Yeah, they used with to the run whole cash time together. Cash time. So I see the DM. I'm like, oh, are Universal on Instagram. Nah, I leave it. But I go back to it. I text him my number instead. He hits me on WhatsApp. He's like, yo, this is an actual thing, right? So MTV hit me up to do an interview. Go. When their offices were still in Hyde Park, I yeah. pull up there. So after they, I hit them up. I'm like, okay, actually, let me pass by there. Because I was with Pencil. I'm with Pencil. We walk in, boardroom. He's ready for us. He's like, yo, finally get to meet the man. What's up? Like, yo, the song is doing crazy, bro. Like, this is a crazy time for SA Hip Hop. I feel like you, like, one of the pioneers of a different kind of sound because... I come from the era of Bopro and like seeing you rapping Pitori like that and the city having your back, that's crazy. And then that's when he actually, we had talks about like a licensing agreement. So it was like, yo, it's not even pressure. Just send it to your people. Like if you got lawyers and already at the time I had a relationship established to it tailor-made and homecoming so i send the agreement to Gatleo. so the meeting was actually about the licensing agreement so he was like yo what are you trying to do with these guys because it can really be whatever you want it to be so it was a uh, two singles agreement uh culture voucher and the remix and follow-up single and then first option album right so culture voucher was already out there the remix was in the works also them they didn't know that also didn't know so we in the office we having a meeting it's like yo so what is your guy mega saying is he showing you love off of like just doing the show or is it real real love i'm like it's real love it's like oh how real is it and then i played the song it's like is it really i'm like listen <laughs> Had the verse. He's like, yo, you on go. So what's stopping us now? I was like, yo, the remix really to me wasn't like a moment to try to outdo the original song. I really wanted to put people that really I felt like inspired me. Like when I saw like MT having his run with Roll Up, like being a hustler, being a trap artist in SA, and I come from the trap. Like everything I'd hear in like overseas rap music and trap was the stuff that we were doing in the Pelly streets and that sort of translated into my raps because I was talking about from me talking about the stuff I was doing in high school started maturing into the stuff that I was facing life like my near-death experiences the stuff that I was facing also losing homies to like the streets homies being locked down and stuff like that so 
um Moosley also did a verse on the remix um Boiti also did a verse Gigi Lamain also did a verse cause I really wanted it to be a moment where it's like just put the beat out there whoever feels like they got a 16 for the song do it and then have an official remix outside of that so it was like um KO also JR um yo actually quite a few people hit me up so much and at that That's time like whole game. yeah i was i was already pulling up to Bori's crib after gigs like after gigs i was at Bori's crib um him and Gabzo were like working on the first scorpion kings so when they live for gigs after their sessions i'm there put a beat on their hip-hop rapping played for bodies like yo you on to something you on to something and then from there i ended up putting mt on the remix with aka raf helped me mix and master the song legend so java also one of the people that showed me love he hit me up was like yo raf is out here uh mt i know he sent you the first so if you need a proper mix and master it's all love you can pull up pulled up to rough spot in kayalami got to meet java for the first time he was recording this other yo emotional song and then we got to like have a chat plant and then rough i sent him the saps loaded them up and then asked me for like a reference of how I want the song to sound in terms of like trap, gave him the reference. And then when he gave me the song, I already had it. I was going into universal meetings with the finished song, but wanting to hear what they have in terms of like plans. Cause they were like, yo, when is AK gonna give you the verse? I was like, relax, trust me, I got this. But they're like, no, you don't really got this. Someone can maybe a and out hit him up. I'm like, nah, I don't want it to be weird like that because I really got like direct contact with bro's team and I really got his number direct line. Like I still hit him up till this day. Like send them the, the song. And then I guess at the time, Universal didn't really understand where hip hop was at at the time. Like the song really did numbers, trust me. But I felt it could have done more. But also it was a learning curve for me because that was the first time working with a major. I'm coming from the streets, having my own entity called Kasi Music Entertainment. Me and the homies dropping music on DSPs with that entity. So I'm already having the... um. Let me say like Rock Nation with Dame and Jay with Def Jam. I already had that mindset at the time where I was like, yo, I feel like if I got the spotlight shining on me and a homie is dope that I know and I'm cool with and it's not really forced, they got some music to drop, we can put it on Gassi Music Entertainment, they'll get to keep whatever is theirs off of whatever the song makes. Just to enlighten the bros also on the tune call distro apple music day and that you can really have your music out there like that and then 2019 was really a learning curve for me like i really learned a lot i also grew in terms of like the brand my mindset as a business as well and you're about to take off yeah and then lockdown comes yeah so also this is this is the other important part of my story when Culture Vulture, the song was doing numbers in Pretoria. Zuchi pulls up to my Zuchi DJ. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm there. What's up, Zuchi? <laughs> yeah, the legend, living legend right there. I'm there performing Cozy, 012 Central. Um, I think I just got off stage and the last song I this performed. This is not 2020 or still 2019? 2019. Oh, okay, before yeah. lockdown, yeah. So, I had just performed Culture Vulture. He pulls up to my DJ. He's like, yo, what's that song called? So my homie is like, yo, Culture Vulture 25. So he puts my handle on <coughs> Zoo's phone. Zoo saves it. Hits me up on uh, Twitter. Yeah. He's like, yo, bro, like, your sound is crazy. I heard a song by you, but I forgot the name. So I sent him the screenshot of the song. He's like, yo, the exact same song. So if you need me, bro, it's all love for real. 
I got beats, I can send you a pack and stuff like that. Actually, pull up on me. Pulled up on Zoo at Booming, my DJ, and Gloss, my And you with him again tonight, ne? Yeah. You're recording with Zoo, no? Living Legend. Uh, Zoo, Flame, okay. Diamonds. Nice. Yeah, we all, really... all the best for tonight. Yeah. You must record some fire, <laughs> some fire music. Only fire, trust me. So, I also learned a lot from Zoo, like when it comes to music, because my production side, I sort of contributed a bit with my album because some of the songs I was pulling up, they were rough. And then Zoo was polishing the song saying, yo, nah, this is fire. Your beat is just outdated. We're going to make a new beat, like stuff like that. And what the outcome of the song would always be crazy. So Zoo was like, yo, this song is like a big song in a while since like Roll Up and Juice Back and it already has a remix, you should really follow up with your debut after this one, and you cannot fumble this. So if you need me, I'm out here. He sent me a beat pack when I pulled up on him the first time, me, Booming, Klaus. We recorded a joint. Send me the export of that joint. When I got home, the beats he sent me, two of them, I already wrote to them, recorded, played for the homie. I'm like, yo, I think me and Zoo are on some different stuff. Like, this is sounding like the next. So, off of me doing shows in 2019, whenever I had time, because Zoo was in between uh, Joburg North and Pretoria East. I think at the time it was still with Fifth Season, no? Mm, that was after Fifth Season. Oh, that was after, okay. Yeah, so, I used to interview him on Massive Metro, he'd be, he'd be brought by... Uh, yeah. The, Fifth season TV. Yeah, I remember that. That was when I was looking at Zoo on TV and I was like, yo, this dude, Pretoria, like it's crazy for us. And then pulling up on Zoo, like every time from shows, the sessions started now making sense and now it started like becoming like we building towards something. And it was like, yo, bro, I think this could be the next album. You really need to think of a name for this project. And I was like, ah, I didn't really know what to call it. I asked my homies, they also didn't know. So I was like, I, but I was already coding Tupac a lot in my music because in the west of Pretoria, we have this thing where we like, yo, Pelly is the west. Like we always throwing West's up the side, W. Yeah. yeah, like we the west coast without the coast. And then, Zoo actually sent me a text saying, yo, since you're from Paley, right? I was like, yeah. It was like, yo, Paley Machiavelli. And that was, that was like the end of it. I was like, Paley Machiavelli is crazy. So once I had that name in mind, the songs that we were making started making sense. And that's how the debut actually came about. And then lockdown happened. <laughs> That was that was a crazy time because during that era of like 2019 and 2020, like I was already one last single away from like fulfilling my deal with Universal, right? Gave them the single during lockdown, it dropped, and then that was like the termination of the licensing agreement played the album for them but I guess they didn't hear what me and Zoo had visioned for the album right so Zoo was like yo we, we could either do this indie because I know you you're not a person who's like all over the place you really focused and you take your time with things so whoever pulls up we can really pitch the album for them if it's worth it drop with them or we can drop it independently but for now i think the album is complete the last verse we got as a feature on peli Machiavelli was the reese joint because when i sent him the song his dad had passed so he was like still reaching out to me we were having conversations because i met him when i was doing artist on the rise and we'd bump into each other at shows he was like yo like trust me bro for sure i'm gonna handle the verse send back the verse all my way like you see how we doing this interview now and then i got studio with zoo later on my way to zoo's interview they sent me 
the first to get song. From Reese. I'm playing it in the car. This the king. You yeah. know you are a king, bro. For <laughs> real. That's, that's... When I first met him, at, I think it was DJ's for breakfast. Yeah. This is before we started Massive Metro. Crazy. From dude. then on, I knew that I, I'm a fan. Yeah, <laughs> another, today, another living style. legend in PTA. So he no was doubt. like the king. And I guess I'm the prince of Pretoria right now when it comes to the rap scene because I feel like after me, they'll... they'll there's gonna be another dude coming out sounding like 25. There's gonna be other dudes inspired by that dude. So I feel like what I'm contributing to, there's a whole legacy behind it. So I'm trying to also be here and like not make it weird at the same time because in Pretoria, we never had the chosy thing where it was like, it's always like if you Sasha, it's Sasha. If it's Peli, it's Peli. If it's Mums, it's Mums. So I was one of the dudes to like, break those chains uh, yeah barriers like i was performing in mums before peli caught on to me so mums was already showing me love when i was performing in peli social was showing me love so i was like so it started becoming a thing where the city is now united so um peli makaveli peli makaveli yeah <laughs> it was supposed what a dope to story bro it was supposed to drop um, in 2020, but then lockdown happened. I got to meet my little dope boy, Drew Slick. We dropped the tape called Champion Music to start 2020 off. Crazy enough, I was even rapping about COVID in the, in the tape. And then COVID really hit SA because we were still watching it on YouTube. It was happening in Wuhan, yeah. right? Two months later, we in lockdown, but the tape is out. And that was really a tough time for me. I didn't really know if I was going to drop the album later in 2020. That's when I dropped the snippet to Peli Machiavelli intro. And then the anticipation got up again because the blogs like Hype Magazine were like, are we ever going to get this Peli Machiavelli? Because 25 and Zoo been saying like, so I was like, yo, I think that's the first single. So crazy enough when Slick was A&R at Sony in 2021, he pitched Peli Machiavelli to the Sony team, right? And um, at the time, um, Pori is also signed to Sony. So Tuli manages Pori and Katleo also does some legal work for like Pori. So he was like, we can do this project however you want it. Like however you want to drop it, trust me, I can get there kind of deal for you or I can set up whatever you want for you and your entity to drop it like that and make sure both parties are like happy with the pro project being out like that right so we were shopping around shopping around I was having conversations with Afrikori the the independent stables and then when Slick pitched um, my album to Sony they hadn't really heard my album, but they just looked at the stuff that I've done since 2019. They were like, yo, this is crazy. Also, Sony hasn't really put out a hip-hop artist in a while, and maybe this could be our dude. In the time, they haven't even heard the album. Pulled up to them. Genuine vibes. Even the energy is like different because it's like these people are on go, and I'm on go with the project. I'm just trying to make sure I put it in... in in the right people's hands, right? So me and Zoo actually ended up reaching an agreement to say, yo, now nah, you can you can you can drop the project however you feel it's gonna take off because this is you in a nutshell. So I ended up doing a JV with Sony and played the album the first time we had a meeting actually at the Sony offices. That's when they heard the album the, the first new offices time. In Rosebank. Yeah, so me and Zoo already had a plan for the album. Like we already knew the intro was the first song, and then we were gonna drop Hustlers Prayer, and then Trap Jumpy, and then we we're gonna have a crazy rollout. Like shout out to Zoo for that. Also, Vaughn from uh, Stay Low, like Stain Entertainment. He's a part of Zuchi's management, he also contributed to like to like the idea of the rollout as well. It was like, yo, Kilo, like 
you being the person that you are taking your time, I feel like it would be an injustice if you don't roll out the album. So we need to really drop it like in stage. Yeah. So hit up uh Zuchi leg me up with Mason Noaben Trogo. He's also a crazy artist who does like um paintings that are like Corsa inspired. So off of that stuff, he shot my cover, came through to Pele, he was telling me about the culture in Eastern Cape. And also when I was, cause I went to an Indian school, like in Lodium. So uh, midway in high school, I embraced Islam because I went on a spiritual journey where I was like Anglican Christian before because of back home. So I started reading deep into Islam and then I understood how the Abrahamic religions are like linked, like Jews, Christians, and Muslims. So getting to understand more like how Jesus links to like Moses and like Abraham, back to Noah and Adam and stuff like that, I made the decision to like convert to Islam. And my mom, we had a talk and she was definitely for it because I had to explain it to her in a way that made sense to her because we growing up in Pele where there's a whole lot of like misconceptions about the religion and stuff like that. So that's how actually the Pele Machiavelli font ended up being in an Arabic like typeface mm. in gold to say Pele Machiavelli. So that was actually capturing my story into 12 tracks and that was the genius of like sushi coke dope everybody like around me fun also Katleho, like everybody who believed in me ever since like i started touching the mic so that was like crazy the album is still on the charts right now which is crazy sa hip-hop top 10 this is like after over 52 weeks now wow it's cool. crazy i'm working on my next one right now it's gonna be crazy and at the same time whatever i'm working on right now i'm also working on something on the side like from the sessions that i'm having with you i have a setup also at home when i'm home i'm working on different stuff trying to put on kids like there's a kid called timber he got a placement on my album there's this young kid called XXM as well. They are part of Zoo's entity called Piff Audio because he's also like, off of the sound he creates sonically, there's kids who actually listen to his beats and they making like crazy stuff. And those are like the new wave producers for SA hip hop and trap music. So I'm also doing a few joints with them doing songs with yo i'm doing songs with i'm really doing songs off of like it's really an energy thing to me because it's like i really gotta mess with your sound first i really need to understand you as a person and then the music just comes automatic after that so i'm doing songs with i can't disclose now but yo the music i'm making right now like i'm in a good space right now mentally as well because covid did a toll on us and i feel like also we don't really talk about um mental health in the industry because i believe we come from different backgrounds but like also me to have like a tough foundation didn't really come from like i had to get tough love in the industry for me to get that i already had tough love off of like seeing bodies in Soulsville and losing my dad and like being caught up in the street life. Like that's really my tough foundation be before I came into the industry. And then I had to learn like, you have to move a certain way. Like the street stuff, need to put it aside a bit because Not the a business- bit. you have to put it aside. Yeah, <laughs> nah, a bit because you know why? A guy like me, I'm coming like, I'm passionate like as a guy, when you meet me, like, you really see, like, a dude who's really passionate about music, right? So certain people don't really understand that, like, being a good person doesn't mean, like, it's your weakness. 
Yeah. You feel me? So I really come from like the tough life. Trust me, like, yo, I wouldn't, I would, it, like me being here right now, it's a blessing. That's why I'll never take the music for granted. Like also my homies know I'm not into no regular stuff like drinking and driving and stuff like that. I'm always the guy who's, whenever my homies are out of place, I'm like, yo, nah, you feel me? So I'm that yeah. guy. So certain things in the industry that you do, certain people will think, yo, this dude is soft because of the passion in the music. But you don't understand that, yo, my G, I'm actually here from the streets, you feel me? And I'm not trying to go back to that life. So there's always a fine line between that where it's like, now I got to let the person know that, yo, my G, it's not a game. Respectfully so, to be like, yo, dude, I'm not out here trying to play games. I'm not with the weird stuff, like, trust me. So it's like the health, the mental health thing, I think... It's like also me, like later in 2022, like mid 2022, I started like hitting up like a counselor and like having these sessions to like talk about my childhood because most people that I meet, they really come from the mud, but it's different compared to mine because mine is like full of traumatic like incidences like i've seen death at a young age like all that stuff like when my granny passed i was still in primary school but she really passed away in front of me and i thought she was mm. taking a nap like stuff like that There's a to lot me of things for you to deal with yeah right? to me it's really like a normal day but like slowly i started to Understand realize like not normal. yeah different people are different are dealing with like different um problems so it's like covid actually was like sort of a setback but like for a bigger comeback because yeah. mentally also before i released my album i had to let the stuff go off my chest like having those conversations with my counselor and then she's hitting me up to follow up so i started to understand now like certain things people see in the hood they're not normal so also it's like in the industry when you get here you kind of see the industry from the outside and it's not what it is it's and i don't think is, yeah, yeah i don't yeah. think a lot of people are prepared for that yeah. so i'm actually one of the people that can be like straightforward to you and be like yo the game is like this my g you gotta protect your own but at the same time it's a business if you're coming from the streets you gotta put the streets aside and don't let it mix with the how you move the people you keep around you where you trying to go with it there's like stuff like that i feel like it's really slept on in sa because a lot of people that blew up in lockdown it happened digitally because we were really in the streets, like from selling the CDs to actually being out there. A lot of people that blew up during lockdown and then lockdown is slowly phasing out and now the new normal, we back outside. So they don't really know how the industry operates and like they think it's this, but it's really not. And it's so, yo. Yo, yo, yo. yo. Thank you, bro. No, it's I a love pleasure, how you, man. You are able to narrate your story. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very happy to meet you. For me, it's my first time meeting you in person. This is actually my first time meeting you as well. I know my story means a lot to you, but off the camera, I'd really love to have a conversation with you because you're one of the people that inspired the story. Like one of the many people, including Bopori, like Brandesh. Six man was out there doing the yo. It was uh, that was a crazy time for me. So when I sum it up into how I approach music right now, I'm actually inspired by all you guys in a nutshell. So I'm looking forward to a follow up interview, and I love the fact that on this interview, I just wanted to know who you are. Yeah. Little did I know how good you are in telling your story. Yeah, and I think a lot of the people who are gonna watch this interview will give them a an insight into mm -hmm. your story. I think yeah. it's even a bonus to those who listen to your music. Yeah. Because a, a lot the of the background saying, story, you, you yeah. say them on the music, you know? Yeah. So I loved how you unpacked it. And I also love your honesty and your humility. 
mm. in, in saying I'm a student of the game. I'm, yeah. you know, I'm learning and I'm appreciating all the love that I got from some of the guys who are already on. Yeah. And just also in mentioning them by their name and just showing, you know, showing paying homage. gratitude and yeah. love. Yeah. It's, it's very important. Yeah, for and, real. And just keep that humility in the industry. I do know that sometimes it's tempting where you kind of feel maybe some people mistaken your kindness yeah. for Mutlaela or Ngaros yeah. Tipanyan. Yeah. It mustn't feel like that. You, you must just keep the humility, but we're not saying over Yeah. But you know the game, how it is. Some guys yeah. will test you. <laughs> you <laughs> know? So it's good that at least those are guys. Yeah. No one can just play um, on top of your head. So I just wanted to appreciate you. And I want to do another interview mm -hmm. in a couple of months' time. So I'd love to. Let, let's let the story grow again. Yeah. And then... Um, After my next drop, for yeah, sure. Yeah, and then catch for up. For sure, yeah. we need to. We so thank to. you it's for spending important. your time with me and nah. sharing the story with me. It's a pleasure. I had to clear my whole day. Leave studio for later on for me to be here right now because this means a lot to me. More than you could actually think about this, like from me telling you my brother is a big fan of you, like I'm one person who's like, I really look at God giving me a second chance to be here, like from me being a kid in the living room in the hood, watching you on TV and me being here right now with you, it's like a blessing to me because it's like full circle. Because it's like you inspired me. Now I'm here with you trying to tell my You're story. You're inspiring my kids. Yo, you know what I mean? Yo, <laughs> yeah, for real. By it the way, my, my daughter is your fan. For real? <laughs> oh, yeah. She listens to your music. Yeah, shout out to her as well. So I'd really like it to be that after me, there really comes like 10 generations after me. There's a kid who's going to come here and be like, yo, when 25 was still in Sourceville, putting out them little songs on SoundCloud, yo, that kind of gave me the vision. Like, that's what I would love to leave as a legacy, an essay. And it's a, it's a work in progress. Like, I'm working towards it now. Like, where I'm at right now, it's not where I'm really trying to be. So God, this I'm is the beginning. Yeah, we're trying to take it like out the country and like tour the world and get to meet like other artists that inspire me in the States and I know it's possible, so. Of course, bro. Yeah. It'll all happen. For real. Now I'm just excited that uh, I'm meeting you in the beginning. <laughs> so also yeah. toilet da. Because I'm blind when yeah. I watch this interview. I'm like, this is when you were starting out. Yeah, and those that know me, they know I'm a real one. I, I don't forget where I come from. When I'm in the hood, it's not weird, like. I'm a real one, I'm really tapped in, in the hood. But also at the same time, I'm trying to let them know that, yo, I'm doing big things for us as the hood. So certain times when I'm not there, it don't mean I'm changing up or I'm switching up. It's all love. Like, I call my homies. I'm in studio. Whenever I get stuck, like writing raps, and I really think about my homie, I hit them up, yo. What you up to? At your house, the chance. At your hey, hear my mom's check on the fam. You feel me? So I'm yeah. really like one of those people that really, and it's like certain stuff you can't really fake. Like that's really who I am, cause that's how my mama raised me. So like certain people see the image on TV, but when they bump into me in real life, it's like yo, like 25 is one of the most humble dudes. Yeah, you're really chill, bro. Yeah. People used to say that about pro, like. It's, it's just this chilled guy who's just humble. Yeah. But he him on his music. Is it the same person? Yeah, because it's <laughs> like the music certain, snaps, certain people will be like, eh. I can't really pull up on Chuck Five like that. Yeah, Let me just. Like, and then when I'm like, ah, oh, Joe, pull up. Hey, Joe Dintang. Ah, Joe Monat. Ah, Joe Style. Hey, Joe Lena also make music. I'm like, for real. Hey, Joe Bontemo. Hey, Joe, I'm gonna put you on. On Twitter, Joe, if it's fire, let's meet at the top on Twitter. Those kind of conversations. And sometimes that's really how I do my features as well. It, it's not about who you are. It's about if the music is fire. Like, if yeah. the music is fire, trust me, I'm going to jump on the record and it's, it's no charge for me. Like, with the platform that I have, I'm going to really put it out there to make a, to make a difference in your life. Ladies and gentlemen. Peli Makaveli, 25K. Last words maybe to um, young cats, aspiring musicians yeah. out there, you know? Um, to the up and coming, um, specifically in PTA. Like, I know it's kind of tough when you're looking at the game. Ologo Peli, Ologo Sosha, Ologo Mamsi. And then 
you got a chalk five out here doing this thing representing the 012 it's really possible for you as well like also now things are different i come from the era where i was selling mixtapes from prinko cds like pirating my own music to me now dropping on all these digital platforms is really possible for you if if you really invest in your craft like here's my chat you don't really need to be a rapper like you could be in the hood but you aspire to be like a doctor you could really like off of the law that you have small laptop wi-fi thing, access internet get the information that you need put in the work consistency you feel me you're on your way to become whatever you aspire to be because that's really how it happened with me like investing into the craft of like buying the equipment having to respect the equipment to know that yo when i'm recording music this is what i'm doing and stuff like that and then over time it became an actual thing so whoever you are wherever you are it don't matter where you come from you can literally like use whatever you have like and also the people that you keep around you is very important also because that's your support structure and also a representation of who you are so you need to be around people that empower you people who will call you out if you're doing something wrong not people that will guess like you to do the wrong stuff because it looks cool doing wrong stuff but like there's consequences to that and like trust me i've seen it firsthand I have friends that are not here with me right now. Other friends are locked down and it's all love with them even like when we follow up having these conversations and I'm out here representing them. It's like, I hope I can inspire a kid from whichever township it is in South Africa. It's really possible to be like whatever you want to be. Trust me. Choco 5K, Mepeli Makabe. Great man. to meet you, bro. Great to meet you too. And I'm proud of you. We talk about yeah. you, man. Nah, for real. Yeah, so one day, it's like a talk of it, it's like a silly story. Yeah. We'll have a interview. Yeah. They're going to know, the living legend. It was like, <laughs> yo, young I'm goat on his way with the young goat having a sit down. It's goat talk. You feel me? Love you, bro. Big up and thank you for making your, your, your dad proud wherever he is. Yeah. He's proud of you. For I lost sure. my father as well. For sure, for sure. Sadly, five years ago, 2017. Yeah. So I, I do know it mm -hmm. doesn't matter what age you are. Yeah. Um, the pain of losing a parent never goes away. Yeah. So we talk on and continue to make your parents like us here. For sure, proud. for sure, for sure. All one, two to the world. Thank you, son. For life. <laughs> thank you, guys. See you on the next video. DJ School Live presents.